Well, welcome everyone. We're excited to be here today um, as we announce the Columbia Youth Climate Action Fund announcement. And what's so great about this is I had an opportunity, uh, courtesy of Bloomberg Philanthropies, to go to COP28. It was the first year that subnational leaders were invited to this climate uh, conference. And it was probably one of probably in the top 10 experiences because of the opportunity to be there with 150 other mayors from across the globe and share ideas and, and discuss how do we address climate change and protect our natural resources, which is what we all want. And it was fun for me because I, I had a, a little bit of different approaches as, as I was talking with my colleagues there about it, which was, you know, our, our hunter and fishermen uh, one of our largest industries here in South Carolina are probably the most uh, conservation-minded um, folks there is, and engaging them in part of the process is so important. But as you know, this isn't uh, a one-party issue. This is a people issue. This is a community issue. This is a world issue, and it's a discussion everywhere. But Bloomberg has given us an opportunity to make sure that we can pull in more citizens, that we can involve our community, especially our youth, who are our future leaders. You know, Bloomberg Philanthropies is led by mayor, former mayor of New York City, uh, and he'll always be Mayor Mike. He also just received the Presidential Medal of uh, Freedom. But what he's done is he's invested incredibly into local communities, especially in mayors and city staff members through different programs through his Harvard uh, Bloomberg program through the philanthropies, through grant process, really empowering uh, smaller communities, cities at the local level to, to make changes. And that's everything by learning to use our data to make sure that we're making decisions not based on emotion, but actual data that has real impact to affect each and everybody in our community. Helping us work through programs, helped us go through and study and validate the Rapid Shelter and the Future Hope Center. Mike Bloomberg has invested probably more than any other individual in, in the United States into really forwarding, making change for the betterment of our community. I don't care if it's arts, cultural, business, uh, everything from how we procure products to how we, we move through and invest our money in the cities through infrastructure, how we leverage grants. But this is really exciting because this first grant here is for $50,000 to the City of Columbia, uh, which will open up an opportunity for it to get additional $100,000 to continue and span these programs. So what's exciting about this program? We're gonna distribute micro grants to the youth between 15 and 24 for sustainability projects that line up with our goals that our CPAC committee has helped us develop which I have to give a shout out to the CPAC members behind me because when I was able to share with folks across not only the United States but in, in Europe and across the country that we are a gold certified city, LEED certified city, that we have an action plan, they were extremely impressed because a lot of com communities are still trying to figure out how to put something together. And I said, look, you just get your community involved, you'll get the answers, and that's what we have here. The funds can be used for research, surveys, awareness campaigns, projects, workshops, partnerships, and a lot more. So we're really excited about this opportunity and where it can lead. So later today, the City of Columbia Youth Climate Action Fund applications will open. You can access the application on the city's website under strategic initiatives where you can also find more information. The application is short, sweet, because we want the future leaders to step up the challenge and without a bunch of barriers to get this money and, and move forward. Uh, our, our, action, our Climate Protection Action Campaign Group led by Sustainability Facilitator Mary Pat Baldoff, who's right here behind us, um, we'll review applications, determine the size of the micro grants for each project that's eligible. And these grants will range from $1,500 to $5,000 depending on the scope and the size. Schools, organizations, groups with tax status to accept grant funds are encouraged to imply. If you're a group, a youth group with, uh, without account of, uh, accounting capabilities, we also ask you to apply your ID and indicate you may have a sponsor. 
We're here to help. This team's here to help. And it's so exciting that we have this opportunity to do this. I got to thank CPAC for encouraging us to continue to work to make Columbia not only sustainable but steadfast. We got to thank Mary Pat who continues to put her heart and soul into making sure that Columbia becomes the number one city and that she looks at it from her sustainability hat and glasses but always willing to jump in. And Mary Pat, thank you so much for everything you do. Columbia, is, uh, as we said, is the only gold lead certified city in the state of South Carolina. For us, that is not where we want to be. We want to be platinum. So we're going to continue to do everything to get there. And we're going to continue to lead efforts in our uh, community to preserve all our natural assets. As you know, we are filled with them, and we want to continue to do that. And the only way to protect them is to work together to do that. So spread the word. Get people to sign up. We look forward to it, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Oh, I, I think there's there's some uh, youth groups, especially uh, at Benedict and University of South Carolina, that could benefit this. We also have gotten a lot of interest from from our high school folks who are really interested in building up a program and, and helping the the schools build a strategic plan. Why is that important? Right now, because of the Inflation Reduction Act, there's a, a, a segment in there called direct pay, and that allows schools to take advantage of solar and other opportunities and get what they call, a, it would have been a tax credit if you were uh, in business, but you would get a cash grant back. So that allows them to do more projects because they're getting part of that funding back. So timing right now for cities, nonprofits, universities, and others is incredible time that we could take advantage of this. And so this is part of the push too, is leveraging those resources that are out there. You don't have one? What, um, like what, what products in particular would you like to see come out of this? Well, I think having a strategic plan, you know, I mean, when you look across with the resources that are available for us today at, at, at every level, I mean, you know, talk about water quality, talk about, um, you know, uh, renewable energy is we're making our step there, Re taking advantage of, of of weatherization, all types, but also in these programs allows to create apprenticeships. So we're teaching the next group, which could open up job opportunities as well. So when you look at all of it combined, it's like the perfect storm, and this is a way to jumpstart that, especially at the youth level. How would this benefit the youth going forward with these projects? Oh, I mean, the, the fact that they have an opportunity to make a difference, which gives them, you know, like anything, gives them a direction and a pathway moving forward to take advantage of future jobs. Um, it's not going to hurt uh, a resume. It's certainly not going to hurt their college applications if they're not in college. Those in college today, sustainability is a main part of economic development. Businesses are looking at communities they're investing. They're looking to see who's there to take. And so when they're making a decision about where they're going to move, open up, if it's a back office, a cybersecurity, or a new location, a subsidiary, they're looking at communities that are committed. And that's why the gold lead certified is so important for us. But it's also, it gives a pathway. So to me, that gives that, the youth a jump start as they go into the business world. We good? Is there anything that you want to say that's important that we didn't ask you? Well, I think the biggest thing is that, you know, for us, this is an opportunity to access more funding. And the more funding we can do, the more we can help groups make a difference because collectively, we can do a lot together. It can't just be the city, it can't just be the feds, which really got to be community driven. But that means from every age up. And I just think. The more we can show that we're, we're taking this money and making a difference, so that's why we're really encouraging people to, to go after these grants, put these plans together or workshops or surveys, whatever it is, and let's take that data collectively and let's go after more funding. Is this more about encouraging new ideas or then like building on the 
can be a combination of both. I mean, communication is probably the biggest thing. Understanding that these things are achievable, but also understanding what's available to you. And I think a lot of people, we spent a lot of time this year, especially at the U.S. Conference of Mayors, and in and all our workshops talking about the direct pay because that allows us to do things that we didn't imagine we could do in a much shorter time. I mean, that allows us to go after solar, uh, anaerobic digestion with food recycling, allows us to work on our hydro plant. I mean, to reconstitute our hydro plant and others, that's eight to 10 megawatts of power, clean power that we could bat at. Our goal is to try to get to 100% renewable. That's a stretch now especially in a hurricane prone community, but we gotta keep trying to get there. And so I think the more ideas, the more plans, the more people that are engaged, the better off we are. So it's safe to say if they come up with a, a new cool addition the city would be willing to use it? Or we'll fly it up on the flagpole. I mean, we're excited about those type of things, but it also takes, you know, that initiative for folks to, to realize, and I think sometimes a little grant helps them get there.